the task is of the task is a the task is of waiting timeline and what to do and actually what not to do. Lots of very useful information. Right and the groom getting ready. I've done over 500 weddings. First look photos, ceremony photos, wedding party photos and family portraits. Checklist. Sunset pictures. Very underestimated topic by the way. The air is filled with the beautiful golden hue and who wrote that? Reception photos. FAQ. There is almost no options to avoid the first look on a winter weddings. Very important note, it wouldn't help to organize the crowd. Whew, that's it, let's go forward. Hi guys, Sergey from Sergey Green Photography Studio here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make your, how to build your perfect wedding timeline. And at the end, they'll answer all of the most common question that appears when you're creating your perfect timeline. Um, you don't have to write down anything. It's, it's quite a complicated and long topic overall. I'm gonna link my blog post with all of the examples of the best timelines and what to do and actually what not to do. So just sit down, relax and watch this video until the end and you'll find lots of very useful information. I've done over 500 weddings or so for the past uh, eight years and I have quite a lot of things to share. So let's start from the beginning, from the arrival to the venue and the bride and the groom getting ready. As a rule, I get to the venue in advance. For instance, if the wedding preparation starts at 10 a.m. Uh, with the arrival of makeup artist, I will be there about an hour earlier. If the second photographer will come at this time, which is usually the case, we'll take a look around the venue together for the best photo spots. For a photographer, it's crucial to understand how to take uh, the most advantage of the natural light at the venue. The sun always goes in the same direction and uh, photographers uh, can easily calculate where uh, the deep shadows or diffuse light or direct sun will be during the day. Um, for example, if the sun sets behind the barn uh, at the workers range, for example, it means in front of the building, it will be a good shade for the group shot. Another necessity to inspect the area is the preparation for the shot of the getting ready details. A photographer has to find the spot for uh, hanging the wedding dress and placing accessories as shoes, the rings and other things. Um, he will be looking for absolutely stunning uh, backgrounds for it. When we are ready to do the getting ready shots, I and the second shooter work separately from each other. Uh, the second photographer takes picture of the groom getting ready because it's less difficult, it's much easier actually. Um, uh, the groom and his party can be ready in about 20, 30 minutes. At the same time, I or another uh, lead photographer capture all the wedding details of the bridal preparation. Getting dressed and uh, do makeup and group photos can take more than two hours. For the bride and her bridesmaids, uh, this time is full of excitement and joy. The task of the photographer is to capture this memorable moments and to convey the intimate and joyful atmosphere in the getting ready place without being too instructive. At the same time, if I feel that uh, my client, my bride needs some instruction and need to her mood to lift up a little, I will do everything that it takes really. First look photos. Um, in this video, I'm not gonna be talking about whether you should do your first look or not. We're gonna do the separate video on this. In, in this section, I just wanna talk you through what do we do during the day when we're making the first look uh, in both of the cases, in the summertime uh, weddings and in the winter time. So let's go forward. Uh, one of the important points of our uh, site investigation is research for the first look spots. 
finding the place uh, can be difficult, uh, particularly at noon when the sun is directly overhead. And it's usually the time when you're doing actually the first look, because if you're doing, you're getting ready uh, starting from 10, you probably will be done by noon. Uh, this direct light, in other words, midday light, is far from the best. In the mid of the day, the sun is at its strongest, colors are washed out and the shadows are short, which can give uh, everything a flat look, really. There is a lot of contrast and some details can look bleach in pictures, uh, while others will be nearly black. However, uh, often we have no choice but to shoot in this condition. In such a situation, we are looking for soft diffused light over locations, uh, for example, on uh, verandas, galleries, balconies uh, that are roofed partly enclosed or uh, wooden areas like roofs and orchards. That's why in all of my uh, venue reviews, you'll find the specific section for the first look. A dense cover of the trees make the light go through the leaves and creates enough shadows. I'll better show you in the picture. It's much harder to explain it that way. Um, shaded area, however, should not be in the full shade. Uh, we still need to do is we still need to have some available light. Otherwise, we will end up with uh, dark photos without any light breaks. If your best day starts at dull or cloudy, which is very rare here in California, uh, the thing which you need to know is that. Uh, it's sometimes better to shoot on a day like this than under the blazing sun. The clouds in the sky create the natural effect of diffused light and there is no need to search for uh, immediate shade. Photos in diffused light will look like the sunset pictures basically. So these images can be even better than photos in direct light. <clears throat> Ceremony photos. After reviewing the venue in the daylight, we understand where and how the ceremony will go. Um, every ceremony has its nuances, small differences. Sometimes the wedding altar area is brightly lit and the ceremony sitting for the guests and in the shade. For a photographer, it's mean that we cannot take pictures straight from the guest area because of these differences in the light. Um, we will take lots of pictures, but most of them would be from the side. In that case, we usually, in that case, we usually shoot at the side of the aisle. It's also important that the altar place is in the shade. The situation when one partner is in the shade and the second person stay under the direct sunlight has to be avoided at any cost, really. Uh, These partial shadows are responsible for failed close-up when the light hit uh, one person in the face and the other in the complete shade. Uh, we want the couple faces to be clear on the photos, obviously. Another story that you can expect with very high probability at uh, California outdoor venues is the blazing sun in August. Usually the staff of the venue provides some sort of things to fight the heat, uh, some sort of umbrellas or a fence or something like that. Uh, Serendipity Garden uh, and the Malibu Rocky Ox provide umbrellas, for example. But you have to be aware of these small uh, details, particularly if, if it's not possible to move the ceremony to another place. Another thing to keep in mind that the venue itself uh, might have some restrictions for photography. As an example, the Wi-Fi charge and pretty much any other charge, uh, when, a when a photographer has to stay behind the last row during the wedding uh, ceremony. Only after the ceremony is finished, we may re-enter the chapel for close-ups in the group shots. Therefore, it makes uh, the most sense to visit the venue uh, the same month uh, the wedding will take place. Uh, then you will have an understanding of uh, what the light will look like on your wedding day and uh, be sure that the management of the venue gives uh, unbiased, uh, comprehensive information to you. Wedding party photos and family portraits. 
In the summer weddings, uh, the family and the group photos take place directly after the ceremony, uh, while the guests enjoy, enjoy their cocktail hour. In a winter wedding, group photos can immediately follow the first look, as the daylight hours are uh, very short and it may be not enough time for the quality day pictures. The main thing to worry about when you're planning the group shots is to find the big enough place uh, with the shade for the whole group. Another challenge is the time for the family shot. You don't need to calculate the exact duration of it, uh, just calculate how many people will take part in the group shots. Uh, from my experience, every group takes about three, four minutes of the photographer's time. If there are 10, 13 group on average of family members and friends based on your 150 people uh, at your wedding. The group photos will take approximately 30 to 40 minutes. But there is another advice from the experienced photographer to avoid tricky situation. If you're going to make family shots after the ceremony, inform all uh, participants in advance and remind them at least three times about it. Uh, as far as I can tell, after the ceremony, guests are eager to go to the cocktail hour and anyone who, is, who has uh, reached the bar, it's hard to bring them back. It takes time to bring all of your guests and family back to the pictures. Even 5-10 minutes spent on it, it's already a third of the time planned for the family photos. Let's talk about a family portrait checklist. Uh, some couples decide to take family photos according to the wedding portrait checklist. Uh, they prepare this list in advance and share it with their photographer to take a group photos. I especially recommend this list for a big wedding like Indian, Persian or Median weddings. Actually, once at a large Indian wedding, I made about four hour family photo shoot with more than 500 guests. It would be hard to show you right over here the perfect wedding timeline. You'll find the perfect checklist in my blog. I'll link it below. I usually take wedding party pictures first and the family pictures after because lots of people from the wedding party are from the family. Very important note, if you give a photographer a list with the names or the list of the family members, it wouldn't help to organize the crowd, really. He needs to help from uh, anybody who knows all the guests. Usually it's someone of the bridesmaids or the groomsmen's to help out. Um, this person has to be active and loud enough to call upon and gather everyone. I usually spot this person during the getting ready shots and slowly introduce them to this idea. If you're in the doubt whether you need uh, the list or not, you probably don't need it. Sunset pictures, very underestimated topic by the way. Or golden hour shots in general. Uh, there are two best options in your wedding photography timeline to make sunset photos. Uh, the first photographers can suggest newlyweds to make sunset shots right after the ceremony if there is not much time left before the sunset. It's very common for the winter weddings. Um, during that, the second photographer takes uh, cocktail hour shots and details. Otherwise, if there is plenty of time before the sunset, the couple makes their grand entrance and the reception party starts. That is the summertime scenario. After meals are served, the couple at the convenient moment can leave the guest for the sunset uh, photos. I highly recommend not to underestimate the importance of the sunset pictures. They might be the best photos in your wedding al album. They actually are. Uh, not without reason, this time at about 20-30 minutes before the sunset is called the golden hours. Uh, this magical moment of the day precedes the, the best light for the photographers. Uh, the sun is already low on the horizon. The light is more diffused and redder. There are no hard shadows that you can see at the high noon. This helps achieve the effects that on the pictures that aren't possible at any other time of the day. It's better not to shorten or rush the sunset 
Pictures. Sadly, Sunset Pictures starts later than it should be. Once I was asked if I could postpone the Sunset Pictures, unfortunately, uh, the sun will not wait for anybody. Sometimes a wedding planner shortened the timeline uh, for sunset photography because of the newlyweds are needed for the grand entrance or the gate cutting. As a result, we get 15 minutes of the shooting instead of like 30, 40 minutes, including the time to move from one spot to another. In such situation, I try to find a compromise while explaining that the couple need more time until all the right moment, moment will be captured. An experienced wedding planner, and I'm usually working with them, will perfectly understand this necessity um, without any further explanation. Reception photos. And you think it's the hardest part, but it's actually easiest part uh, for a photographer than any other part of the wedding. Although it can include many things, it typically uh, placed in only one location and the lighting can be controlled easily. Everything that photographer has to do is to follow event timeline and shoot, really. If he need to leave uh, his spot for a short period of time, the second photographer will place him immediately. Sometimes the reception uh, hall uh, may be too dark or uh, for quality shots. Uh, the ceiling or walls don't reflect the light is actually very common for rustic uh, events like Calamigas Ranch, for example. Uh, only one flash on the photographer's camera is not enough in this case. In such a situation, we use additional lighting as the one I, as I have right now. I also recommend to add some additional lighting to, to create a very cool mood like candles or chandeliers or bistro lights. Um, or strings, bulbs around the tables and other things. And as I promised at the very beginning, I'll answer the most common question that I got asked through the emails or the calls with my clients. So FAQ. And the first one, and it's incredibly common when I'm meeting with my clients and probably the most confusing one that got copied from one wedding block to another and it's a very scary one for the photographer who just started. Uh, does it really matter if you haven't worked at my venue before? In my opinion, it doesn't matter for a really successful established uh, wedding photographer as I am, uh, whether I was there before or not. For me, it's enough to investigate the area one or two hours before the event will start to get an idea of where the best photos uh, would be happening. Reviewing other photographers' work can help as well. At the same time, we have so many tools as the Google Maps and the 3D views and everything like that. So it doesn't really matter if your photographer has been at your venue or not. Uh, he can get there two hours in advance, walk around, figure out uh, in his head where he's going to do some sort of things and walk through, you, through your timeline as well. And the other thing actually to keep in mind that uh, venues changed. Uh, through the years, like uh, the same venue, the same Columbus Ranch in 2018 would be different from 2020 and it's probably going to be very different in 2024. So if you shot there before, it doesn't mean that you will just show up there and everything it would be where it was. Things would change. Another very common question, do you as a photographer attend to our rehearsal? Um, it's common practice that a photographer attended the rehearsal. Uh, sometimes couple book the photo shoot of the entire pre-wedding day. I had the client which booked three days of the shot uh, before the wedding, the wedding day itself, and the day earlier, the day after, sorry. I'm doing the, exactly what my client want. As for the wedding rehearsal, in my opinion, it's worth doing uh, particularly in the weddings, including the special rituals and in the large wedding or where uh, kids participating in the actual ceremony. You need to make sure that everybody know uh, what they're doing in the wedding day, actually. It is better to devote a day to this pre-wedding preparation. Uh, if the ceremony and other events are small with a few attendants and do not include any rituals, you can try to make the rehearsal on the same day in the morning. 
but usually if you plan it at the morning time of your wedding day, you're gonna miss it, unfortunately. It's just too much going on in the wedding day, specifically all these getting ready shots, arrival of the flowers, food, and things that you didn't expect. Uh, so you probably missed the rehearsal if you plan it on the morning day of your actual wedding day. Another very common question, can we give you a list of specific shots we want? Um, sure, for me it's an absolutely normal practice as well. I'm always up to such a wedding photo checklist. I explain in advance that this list has to comply with the ambience of the venue chosen for the celebration and it's uh, suitable for our timeline. But as far as for me, I will try to do my best to fulfill uh, the wishes of my clients. Uh, from, from my experience, I know only two reasons that may prevent me from capturing the moments you want. Unfortunately, it may be not enough time in the wedding photography timeline to take all the shots of the checklist. Sometimes there is not even enough time for the sunset pictures, as I mentioned above. Um, to avoid this difficulty, I recommend adding time for the shots you are hoping to see into your timeline. Uh, don't forget to specify uh, not only your must-have shots, but also the time duration of that plan for them. To make it easier for my client, the week before the wedding, we usually have a call with my couple and go through the entire checklist. The second problem rarely occurs, but it's still there. Their wish is a bit far from reality. For instance, a couple has chosen a venue in the mountains and a big bear somewhere. However, their must-have shots are at the beach. I understand that they like the idea of the seaside shooting, but unfortunately, sometimes it's extremely hard to fulfill this wish. Um, even though the sea is not far from the venue, we must uh, have time to shoot there and to get there. Here's an example based on the real time, uh, real life experience. Uh, newlyweds booked the perfect Victorian Santa Monica wedding venue, which is like 15, 20 minutes uh, away from the beach. The couple supposed that the photo shoot at the beach will last no more than 10, 15 minutes as it's not far from the venue. My opinion was that we have to count on a minimum of 40 minutes. As a rehearsal, uh, they arrived there by car 10 minutes, looked for the parking spot 25 minutes to get to the shoreline another four minutes, plus time to do the actual shoot. And of course, the time to get back to the parking lot. They realized uh, their, their estimation of the time was far from accurate. In that case, we found a solution actually. On the wedding day, uh, their friend gave us a ride to the beach. Uh, the entire photo shoot lasted 40 minutes, but important point that they were aware that it's not gonna last for like 15 to 20 minutes and we were not late for the rest of the things in their timeline. Another very common question, is there a difference in the wedding photog photography timeline between a winter wedding and the summertime wedding? Yes. There is. By making wedding photography schedule for a winter wedding, keep in mind that the sun set earlier in the winter at about 4.30 or 5. It's approximately three hours earlier than in the summer. To make a good use of the time, I highly recommend making the wedding party and family pictures immediately after the first look. And by the way, there is almost no options to avoid the first look on a winter weddings unless your ceremony are at the morning. Anyway, uh, that will help you to go exactly according to the wedding photography schedule in a, and do not miss anything. A common mistake at the winter wedding is to be late with the group photos. They should not be taken after the sunset as it's already not enough light uh, for quality shots. Uh, besides, by adding uh, group pictures to first look shot, uh, you want me to gather and call up all the participants again. So I always advise uh, combining first look and the wedding party and family portraits in the uh, wintertime weddings together. Another very common question. I'm hearing this all the time pretty much. 
when do you usually start shooting on the wedding day? Uh, it's pretty standard for me that I start an hour later than the makeup artist, but actually it depends totally on the bride's wish and what makes, uh, what moments she wants to capture during her wedding preparation. How long it will you to do the makeup? Um, you can roughly estimate it while making your makeup trial some moments uh, before your big day. A lot of brides use their makeup trials for the engagement photo shoots, so I know from the first hands. Um, you only need to calculate accordingly the time the, of the entire makeup process, and if you add 20% to it, uh, you'll have realistic estimate. Usually there are two, three hours and uh, not one or two hours as many brides tend to believe. Another common question that follows how long do I stay on the wedding day? Well, uh, generally speaking, I finish at 11, nearly at the end of the reception. That's 90% of the time. If the venue allows the, allow the sparkling exit, uh, surely I will capture that as well. On the opposite side, at the large Armenian, Indian or Thai weddings, I might stay until 2 or 3 in the morning. But I'll be there as long as you want me to be, basically as long as we will write it down in the contract. Whew, we did it. You watched this video until the end. That was actually quite tough. That took lots of time and preparation to record this video. I hope this was the useful information for you and it will help you to plan your wedding day. I will do many more videos like that where I'm going to be sharing my eight year experience with you guys. And it's very important to know all of these things when you're planning your wedding. You have only one chance to do everything. And even if you're not planning your wedding, you have your wedding planner. Uh, it's still better to know all of this things to keep the process under control. So subscribe to this channel and uh, get notified when the new video will be uploaded. And I'll see you very soon. Again, thank you so much for watching this video.